Hello, I'm Ron Clark. I want to introduce you today to the Consecrator. Again, this presentation will be a lot of photographs because this tool no longer exists. It was damaged beyond repair uh, by shipping to and fro from Berlin, Germany. So, this tool was quite an amazing tool. It was almost my tallest one, not quite, uh, but it was certainly my largest one in terms of size uh, and weight as well. It weighed a total of 16, 17 pounds. Um, so, here are some pictures of the Consecrator. First, I should say, I started work on the Consecrator in uh, spring, March 18th of 2006. Um, I worked on it continuously until um, late June or mid-June of 2006 and then um, tuned the, the crystals on it uh, on the summer solstice 2006. So my pictures will start here with just the basic construction of the form. It's so we'll go now to the construction. It was incredibly uh, difficult for me to make. This is the first time I had ever made it, made a truncated icosododecahedron, which is the form that has 32 faces to it. The only form that has 32 faces, which is, of course, ideal for portraying the 32 paths of wisdom from the Tree of Life. So, it took me quite a long time and a lot of uh, uh, gymnastics to create this form. I first created the form solid, then I actually drilled holes where I was going to put the, um, the quartz crystals, which is something I would never consider doing now. Instead, I cut the holes uh, with an X-Acto knife in the cardboard as I'm putting the layers of it together to form each of the faces. So, at any rate, this time, my first time, I did it the long hard way, and it was very hard. This next one shows the uh, form as it's a little more completed. At the top, these top two uh, pictures are the form to the point where I had painted the interior white and the exterior black, the final colors of the form itself. So it was basically ready to be decorated, to, be, um, to have the crystals put in, and all the wiring done. So, what I started doing then, before the crystals and the wiring, was building the base. Now, in that picture of the um, uh, complete um, tool, you see it has a pyramidal base that has 13 steps to it. Okay, it's six-sided, 13 steps in brown. And that base is where the weight comes from. I realized when designing this tool that it needed some grounding, some major grounding for all the crystals and uh, the dynamic um, that they would um, create. So I really focused on the grounding in this tool. There are 13 pounds of lead weights in the base of it stacked inside. You see a little bit of the stacking there. Um, these are lead fishing weights. Perfect source of lead, uh, which is a very grounding mineral. Um, and then I uh, interwove between there a lot of copper pieces, copper tubing and copper wiring, so that that grounding effect could be communicated throughout the whole of the tool. Um, I built that up, got the uh, base uh, finished with bunch of copper tubing and wire sticking out of the top of it and then I um, could then attach the um, the body to it but I did not yet attach the body to the um, base first I decorated the uh, uh, body itself the um, the sphere with uh, these uh, images that uh, offered a guide 
to the paths um, for each of the uh, double terminated quartz crystals. So that's what this picture is, the decoration for it. And here is a photograph of the inside as well as the outside decorated with the path uh, decorations. Then what I did is I inserted all of the quartz crystals. This, oh, that was one hell of a task. It was the first time I had inserted double terminated quartz crystals into a form like this. Uh, I used paper clay, which is one of my favorite little tools. It's a, it's a clay-like substance that has almost no shrinkage and doesn't need to be fired until it eventually becomes rock hard. Uh, it's a wonderful stuff. And there's also no chemicals involved in it, so I don't have toxic fumes and things like that to deal with. <clears throat> then what I did, the next thing I did, was I created these little uh, piers for the inside uh, to support the sand. This is going to be a central quartz sphere in this tool. Um, I created these so that the, the quartz sphere would be supported in the center of the two uh, hemispheres of this tool. Um, and these needed to be connected to all of the quartz crystals at the same time through wiring. I was planning to wire the quartz crystals together uh, and have them make contact with this sphere in the center. So I built a little stand on the bottom and a stand on the top so that when the two halves came together they would support the quartz crystal. Now how I did this is I started with cardboard and some wooden dowels and I created coils up those wooden dowels. First a layer of copper coiled by hand, coiled up the full length of all six of the dowels involved in this uh, above and below. And then I coiled um, gold wire on top of the copper wire. I wanted to make sure that all energies would be communicated and amplified as they went in contact with the quartz sphere. This took just huge amounts of wire, uh, copper wire and gold wire. So it was very expensive to do all of these coils. These are very dense coils. So I got those set up and inserted into the, the two hemispheres, a, a bottom and a top. Well, okay, now I'm ready. And you can see here in these next two photographs what the, here is the bottom where we have all of the quartz crystal in the bottom hemisphere wired into, uh, joined together by wire um, and then that wire runs in towards this uh, um, stand that I have created and makes contact there with all the wiring of the, the stand um, which connects again to the base, the copper wiring coming out of the base into the bottom uh, uh, quartz um, that piece that I have standing there. We'll get to that later. Um, and same at the top. So the wiring of this was quite an amazing feat, really. Um, I wired them all together on the outside um, of each form. So each hemisphere, uh, all the crystals are wired together and they come up over the lip into the center uh, to make contact with that post that's holding up the central quartz sphere. So I did the bottom and then on the top, and which of course created all kinds of difficulties in getting the two forums to fit together again. I had to make a lot of adjustments. So, next picture is here of the tool itself. First here we have the tool shrouded. Now, um, I, I just created out of uh, a silk, a black silk, big piece of black silk, basically just draped it over the whole form. Now the form, um, when the crystal sphere is not in the center of it, 
It does not have a dynamic energy. What it has is a passive energy that interacts with the environment on a minor level, just because the quartz crystals, the double terminated quartz crystals, but they don't connect to anything, essentially. They, don't, they have nowhere to go with that energy um, without the central quartz sphere. So covering them, it was deemed a wise thing to do, and covering them with silk, of course. Uh, behind where the, um, uh, the tool is sitting there is a piece of silk which I attached to the wall in order to protect my neighbor, because I live in a, lived in an apartment at the time, I mean, to protect my neighbor from radiation of the tool, because when it's plugged in, there is a considerable uh, uh, energy field generated. So, on the left up there is with it shrouded, on the right is unshrouded, and how it looks sitting on top of its stand that I was lucky enough to find uh, just a few days uh, before it was finished. The stand has a little, a little cupboard in it, a door, where the double terminated quartz, I mean the quartz sphere is uh, stored when not in use. And below is a, an obsidian sphere, which is pictured here, the obsidian sphere, on the, underneath it uh, as an additional grounding uh, measure. And that was just so essential to have that there to keep it all grounded at all times. Okay, now here are some pictures of how it looks from the outside, um, all wired up from all the different sides. Uh, it is also, notice in this picture, it's sitting on a lazy Susan so that it can turn around on its base so we can access different sides of the tool at any given time. It was great, very handy. So these are, again, pictures of all the various sides of the tool wired together now, here's more of a close-up on what's happening with the inside. This is the top. You, get, you can see a little uh, better how the um, wires all connect with that internal posting. And here is, again, a little more close-ups of the inside. And these are inside top. Now we come to the inside bottom. There was, at the bottom, um, a larger quartz sphere, a larger quartz crystal. It was not double terminated, it was single terminated, and it rested on all the copper coming up out of the base. It was all making contact with the base of this crystal. Now, this crystal is a polished crystal, uh, and I generally don't use polished crystals, but it was still it was ideal and of a good size for this tool. It could handle the energies that were going to go through it. Okay, so that's there at the base uh, of the tool. Uh, let's see, where are we here? Now we come to the quartz crystal that goes in the center um, of the tool. Now these pictures show the, the, the crystal in that bottom um, a stand that I had built within the, in the tool and then the top will come over and the obverse of that stand uh, touches the crystal and holds it in place. Boy, setting this up was <laughs> major, major task because I'd fit it in and it would be too high. So I'd have to adjust the stand uh, at the right height and try it again and make it just right and oh hundreds of times, so <laughs> it's not quite right. Now you'll notice in the sphere that there is an occlusion layer within it that creates a sort of landscape inside the sphere. Um, it's almost half the sphere um, where this occlusion layer occurs. So keep that in mind because it becomes important in how we use the tool. Okay, so let's go back to the main photograph and we'll talk about what this tool does and how to use it. Why do I call it the consecrator? 
Okay, this tool, when the quartz sphere is in the center of it and the form is closed, now there was a, a specific way of turning it so that it closed properly. Um, when it's in that setup, what it does is it takes in energy through all 32 of those quartz crystals. So, and all 32 of them are tuned, each one to a specific path of the Tree of Life. So, 32 paths of wisdom, 32 quartz crystals. So, it, it takes energy, sort of divides it up uh, to each of these 32 aspects. So, only the aspect of Tiferet can go in the Tiferet crystal. Only the aspect of a Vav can go in the Vav crystal, etc. So it takes the energy and divides it into 32 pieces and channels it all in to that central quartz sphere. The energy resides in the quartz sphere for a while. It uh, percolates a little bit in the sphere and then it begins to radiate from that sphere and it will radiate out, not through the wires, but through space, through air, to, till it reaches those 32 crystals on the outside. And then it begins to radiate through those 32 crystals. That is, it, it, what it's doing is it's digesting energy because it reaches out there where it exits the form and then it is reabsorbed by the form through that natural um, flow of energy from the outside to the inside of the crystal sphere and out again and it creates a torus effect. So energy is going out and coming in and it's continuous. As long as the quartz sphere is in the center, that energy continues to digest as it were. Uh, now, chemical sense, digest. It comes in and goes out and comes in and goes out. And it's continuous. It's going out at the same time that it's coming in. So it's, it's a little more than a torus, really. And it's 360 degree radiation. It's actually more than that. It's every degree of a sphere radiation. In other words, it is from a central point outward in every direction and the same, inward in every direction to that central point. So energy is constantly moving. This is why we need so much grounding in this energy and why I needed that silk on the wall to protect my neighbor because depending on how much energy you put into it, it does naturally amplify energy. Even its own energy, it's always amplifying as it goes back in and all through this process again. Uh, it can reach quite a remarkable, or it could reach quite a remarkable uh, size sphere of energy. I mean, we got it up to oh, probably a 10 foot sphere. Um, that's the most we ever uh, worked it up to. Um, it was really intense. Uh, in one instance of using it, uh, in combination with the other tools for the working group, this is a working group tool, um, we actually heard a buzzing sound in the atmosphere from all of the crystals working together, especially the Consecrator. So that's what the Consecrator does. What we would do with that Consecrator is we would project energy on it. And the energies that are best, it will absorb literally any energy. Um, the ones that for working that were best were either the Adonilite, TMO generated Adonilite, or the Catholic Brilliance. And of course, the Catholic Brilliance is the superior light to use. So we would project energy at the Consecrator have it surround the whole consecrator and then enter the consecrator. And while it's entering the consecrator, we project our awareness into the central quartz sphere. Now, remember that occlusion layer in there that created a sort of 
uh, terrain, uh, we would project our awareness till we were standing there on the, the plane of the crystal inside. And we would observe as the energy came into the quartz crystal where we were standing and filled the quartz crystal. Then we would work with that energy in whatever way we wanted. We would uh, either take it immediately and work with it or let it digest, build up that Taurus effect and build the energy, build the energy. We would sometimes continuously um, project energy at the radiator while projecting our awareness into the center so that it was a constantly growing, dynamic bit of energy. Um, so we could work with that energy or we could just be with that energy. Um, and one thing that you can do uh, with this tool is draw the energy through a specific sephirot or a, a crystal, a double terminated crystal um, and experience in the central sphere that energy of that particular crystal filling the sphere and creating the torus effect on its own. So, there were just so many wonderful things to do with that tool. A lot of them having to do with contemplation. Uh, it was a great place to contemplate in the presence of a, a sephirot, for example, uh, pulling in just that tiferet energy and converting it here in the, in the sphere and being with the sphere and being with the Tiferet energy. Um, it was educational and therapeutic all at the same time. So, another thing we could do is attach our consciousness to the energy as it enters the form through all those double terminated quartz crystals, through each of the 32 paths of wisdom, and have it take our consciousness, thus broken apart, really, um, into the center sphere and then reuniting it in the center sphere and then pulsing out in the Taurus. Uh, doing that with the conscious awareness, uh, it's lubricating, shall we say. It lubricates the awareness. It becomes very fluid, very malleable, um, Great stuff, great stuff. Um, yeah, so that was part of our uh, <clears throat> retinue of uh, working group tools. Um, it was assigned, uh, dedicated really, to Gabriel uh, and the, uh, the West, the Earth element. Um, <clears throat> so, that's the Consecrator. That was one of my more interesting tools. Um, next week, or about next week, I will talk to you about the Unifier, and that will be the last in this series. Um, Unifier is a spectacular, amazing tool that I use to this day. So, till next time, bye-bye.